got the coffee. You want some? <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're at the Fitness Business Summit this weekend. If you are a fitness professional, like a trainer, gym owner, an online coach, anything like that, stop going to expos and start going to this type of event because there's a, it's a two, three day long event actually. It's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm doing a talk this afternoon, which I'm excited about, um, on a panel with Lori Harder, Mike O'Hearn, and Brandon Carter, all about social media growth in the fitness industry. So we're gonna talk about that. But the rest of the day, we're gonna be doing some podcast interviews with all the other speakers and just like showing you around this awesome freaking event. It's hosted by Bedros Koulian. If you don't know who he is, get on his podcast immediately. He is like the founder of Train the Trainer. So like teaching trainers how to grow their businesses because let's face it, they don't teach you that in certification. So we are uh, gonna start off with the podcast. So we're going to um, a different location this morning, which is why we need some coffee. So let's go. anymore and it, it was to a point where I was like what am I doing I don't have my own thing I don't have a business that's just mine like I have this I have this awesome running YouTube channel and affiliate business but it, I felt so like my, my page wasn't me it was like me p promoting stuff all the time that it's easy almost to accept that and say yes I will get paid but I'm like a powerful woman and I'm a powerful influencer and I have a lot of influence on people because of what I say and the way that I think and I've accepted that yep. and I felt like I wasn't using my gifts to the fullest of their potential. What I do day in and day out nutrition training wise because coworkers are asking me like Brian you're freaking you're big man like you've been able to put on mass you're able to maintain this you work a lot like how do you do this? That understanding that you need to fill yourself up whether it's meditation reading podcasts taking time off having a shut off time having a nice slow morning like the, the craig valentine perfect day stuff um and that will allow you to be better for your people and that you can be present when you are talking to them for me just to say you know what i don't care if this whatever views this video gets it does not matter anymore if i speak my truth and i speak what i want and i know in my heart my soul is my passion and is what i want to put out there and is authentic still to me and it really connects with my audience for what products and services that i have it's going to work regardless of the views so the views will go up when i have a bikini haul try on or something like that obviously um but that doesn't necessarily translate to clients every single time at all A really good podcast with our new friend Vince. If you guys don't follow him on YouTube, he has like 300, 400 thousand subscribers. If you're a dude, go follow Vince. He is mostly uh, guys over there. But if you're a girl, I, you know, I'm gonna go follow you. I'm gonna be part of your 10%. We have, we have, we have a lot of ladies who are now coming on over, and uh, you know, fitness pros, and they wanna. I love passion, that. Passion, expertise, and they wanna build the online business too. A lot of ladies who are like postpartum. Uh, Oh, awesome. Yeah, who want to uh, transform their bodies after having babies. Well, you talk about, he talks about the five M's and his five M's are muscle. mission, money, muscle. Well, they actually, they, we got to get them in the right order. Oh, there's an order? Yeah, because there is an order because um, oh. they're built, I mean, I kind of describe them as being in different seasons of life. There's muscle, mindset, money, mission, and then marriage. Muscle comes first because that's the easiest to build. That's true. It's the right? first entry. And marriage comes last because that's the hardest one, right? <laughs> it's easy to get into a marriage. It's hard to get out. <laughs> you don't want to get out. <laughs> right. Going on. That'll cost, you, that'll cost you a lot. That is true. Well, anyways, we're going to head to the... Ex not the expo. I literally almost just said expo. We're going to head to the uh, event now. And... I don't know if it's going to be talking when we get there. We'll find out. Nadim, 
up everybody? We are filming everything for you guys. I'm talking later today, um, but I'm going to be interviewing some people today, so let go. Okay, I am here with Amanda Bucci, and I here I'm going to warn you. I have a joke on Sunday morning in my presentation about Amanda Bucci. So <laughs> it's yes, yes, interesting. Uh, yes, so I'll be there waiting. So um, hear it. Tell me, like the number one thing that you think people should do at, at at a fitness business event or any event to get the most out of it. Um, make selfie videos yes. with everybody that they possibly can. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is a great idea. That's a great idea because you get to meet idea. people and, and grow your network, right? Yeah. No, I think um, obviously sitting in the audience taking notes is a good idea, but you're not going to get the most out of it if you're not networking with people. Mm -hmm. So as scary as it may be, go find the other person who came here alone. Go find the other person who is sitting on their phone in the corner and just go up to them and talk to them and ask them what they're doing. And that's how you know I make strong connections with people just from one-on-one -on -one or one-on-three or one-on-two situations rather than big, massive groups. So just think as one human is one human. It's just a person. They're just like you, and you can conversate on whatever is that. Yeah. So I, I worked myself into the hospital a couple of times, and so I was uh, in 2006. I was able to go from being a full time trainer to being full time online, and I had what I call the paradox of freedom, which mm -hmm. is being able to work whenever you want and party every night. And so you know, I was working like 13 hours a day, and then going out until three o'clock in the morning, and then starting it all over again at 7:30 in the morning. And it caught up to me. And so I ended up having basically a six week anxiety attack that felt like I was having a heart attack for 24 hours a day, seven days a week for six weeks straight. When to do everything. Mm -hmm. And he talks about how in the morning we have the greatest willpower, intention, and discipline. Everybody kind of knows that. And so if you're wasting your morning doing to-do lists or sleeping in, you're really missing out on the best part of the day. Now again, you don't have to get up at 5 a.m., but just make sure you're getting up er a little bit earlier than you want to, and that's the key to success. We're going up to the event just to see what's going on. So spending the day interviewing all the, um, the speakers and then I'm talking, but I want to see what's going on at the actual event, don't you? Uh, yeah, tomorrow, yeah. Oh, yeah, I got back yesterday. Yeah, I think she's back from the next year. Oh my god. Fun little vacation now. Yeah. I'll see you guys later. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. On these platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, remember they're 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 ran by a bidding system, meaning they're going to show whatever is going to get them the most money. Right. And so your free ass is not making them money. <laughs> Therefore, they have no incentive to help you. And for you to think that they deserve to show your shit is the most selfish, entitled, and an arrogant thing ever. If somebody just came into your business and said, like, give me your time, give me your product, give me your service, I'm not going to pay you anything, you would just be mind blown that they would have that expectation, but yet you expect that of the social platforms because they're big. So now they owe you something. It's the fucking stupidest thing ever. So what people got to realize is you got to pay to play. And the only reason why you're afraid to pay is because you don't know how to get a return on your money. Mm -hmm. So for example, if Facebook said, give me a thousand bucks today, you'd be like, I'm I'm not giving you a thousand bucks. Mine. But if they said, I guarantee you, and here's a notary and everything, that you're gonna make two grand back in two days if you give me a thousand today, where do I sign? You would do it right away. So what's that mean? It's a lack of confidence. Why do you have a lack of confidence? You have a lack of a skill set. See, if you understood how to flip the cash, you'd realize that it's the fastest way to grow a business ever. So for example, like we're up like uh, yesterday or three days ago, we spent 25 grand in a day on ads. And with that, we got 3,000 leads. We got 100 members paying us 109 bucks a month. We got uh, like 30 of them to take our lifetime upsell, a percentage of them to buy our other programs, and we ended up making 28,000 bucks that same day. 
So it was like three grand, so that wasn't like a huge win, but now we also have a handful of people paying us month after month after month. We got 3,000 leads who now we have their phone number, their name, and I can reach out to them at any time, and it all happened on autopilot. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, our ads are getting almost a million views a day. Hey, and people are like, well, you're paying for them. I'm like, dude, am I paying for them? Am I getting paid to advertise? Right. Like, I'm not paying for shit. We're making money. Right. <laughs> so like, that's what people don't get is, you're not afraid of advertising, you're afraid of uh, not getting your money back. So and if you're in doing fitness. Let's do people who are interested in getting a better body or okay, be cool. healthier. So curiosity, right? So, hey, what's up? Like you go to the YouTube ad and you wanna break down the fourth wall, meaning you should actually talk to the camera and your YouTube ads and your Facebook ads because people, First of all, they buy because they like you, so they need to understand your personality, and they also want to know you're talking directly to them. Please stop acting like you're not actually talking to them. And then how you leverage curiosity is you hook them. We're saying something like this. You take their biggest problem, which is, hey, you're trying to gain 10 pounds of muscle, but you're struggling to do it, right? So that's the problem that they're facing. So in the beginning of your video, you just say, hey, what's up, it's Billy Jean, and right now I know you're struggling getting that extra 10 pounds of muscle that you've been wanting. So come with me. I want to introduce you to Steve. He just put on 12 pounds of muscle in fucking three weeks just using this simple fucking formula. Actually, I don't know, whatever the fuck it is, right? <laughs> just literally like yeah. any, any form of curiosity. So I guess a short summary of that is show them the result that they want immediately and then reverse engineer that and say, this is how I got it though. I'll show you how to do it. Okay. Amanda and I were talking about like different ways to like ask questions. I'm a lot more on the fly. Mm -hmm. I think she's a little more structured. Why, how do you prepare your questions ahead of time? Um, I literally, it's funny, like some people spend like an hour, I'll spend like 15 minutes going through their most recent stuff, like reading what they have to say, and then I'll just like, once I know what their expertise is and what their zone of genius is, I know exactly who my audience is and what they're gonna need from them. So that's why I was asking Billy, really, like my people are like this, they need this support from you, they are feeling this way in their marketing and their sales, whatever. That allowed him to know how to speak. Cause he Tailoring was, the conversation. Yeah, because like I know who my audience is and what they need, and he could be like, okay, I get that, so I'm gonna change what I say a little bit to be tailored specifically to my people. I guess I do a little bit of that, but if, if you're listening and you're into more like like the question and answer type format or podcasting, yeah. um, just research the person a little bit yeah. and yeah. be get really good at being a listener. Be a listener, because yeah, then you know how to just like respond instead of just waiting to interject in the conversation. So, so um, are, do you think of questions as they're talking? Yeah, yeah. I'll get like one or two, and then from there, I'll just listen to the keywords, and then um, I'll like benchmark it yeah. uh, in my head. I'll it's like a masterful it. like listening and being engaged with what they're saying, but also yeah. thinking of the next question without stifling over what they're saying. Like yeah. you want to keep listening the whole time. We're gonna be on stage. Um, it's gonna be me, Mike, Brandon Carter, and Lori. And we're gonna be talking about Instagram, how to grow on Instagram, and how to build a following that's gonna be potential customers for you, and how to actually build your business on Instagram. And this is my jam. So let's go. But without further ado, I'd like to bring out Mr. Michael Hearn. Yes. Amanda Bucci. Come, you too. Going well. Grab a seat, yes. Lori Harder, where are you, Lori? Come on out. And of course, Mr. Brandon Carter, come on out. My brother, how are you? Wonderful, wonderful. Grab a chair right here. Brandon, perfect. So, uh, we've got a lot of good looking people here. So, I'm going to guess one way to build a massive social media following is to be amazingly beautiful. Amanda, what are the three things that someone would need to know to start a social media following that can grow organically? Good question. So I think the first thing that you have to know is what kind of content is already doing well in the space. I think something that's so underrated is looking at what other people are doing that's already doing well. I'm sure you talk about this a ton, but if something's already doing well in the space, 
you can do it too and you can just put your own spin on it. So understanding what's already doing well and knowing that just because someone else is doing something that doesn't mean it's off limits to you. I think people get stifled so much by seeing Michael Hearn post an ARMS video and they're like, I can't post an ARMS video either, like he already did it. <laughs> and the thing is, it's, everything is not, it's not off limits to you. There's minimal original ideas nowadays. If you have an original idea that no one's ever said before, take that thing to the grave. But to be completely honest, there's not that many min uh, original ideas. You can take anything that you want and spin it and make it your own. Organically, because it was all about what I thought the fan base wanted to hear. And so I was blinded by myself. Um, it's hard to look at yourself outside. You know, you have people talk to you. And that's, that's the great thing about having this weekend is, is you're putting yourself around some incredible people. And so I didn't have that. So everything I was doing was, I was going to be a teacher. All right, let me teach these guys how to weight lift or, or train the way I do. And it was not that that the fan base really took to. What they took to is how I live my life or how I connect with animals. So I try to do things in my life that are exciting. So if I'm bored with my life, my audience is bored. So I'm always going, what can I, what's a new workout? Like, what do people want to hear right now? Like, what's something, a challenge that I've been going through? And honestly, like, my, my biggest posts are either of Chris and I experiencing something new or talking about a challenge that I'm going through. Those are always the ones. Something new, unique, that I know that they're desiring. And yeah, I look back at my posts to see which ones do the best. Start being polarizing and say, okay, I'm going to take a stance on this end. I'm not going to be vanilla, I'm going to take a stance, I'm going to stand for or against something. So maybe you stand for veganism, maybe you stand for hit, or whatever your, whatever your audience, your niche is. There's going to be people that don't care about that, and that's okay. And the people that do care about that are going to love you for standing up for it. They're going to like feel your confidence spewing from you and from what you say. They're going to be so convicted that they're going to be convinced that that's the best thing to do. And you don't have to bring everybody on your side, but the people that do find you because of the fact that you're so convicted and passionate about what you are talking about, they're going to love you and then there'll be other people that are like, ah, eh, screw you, and then they can just unfollow and it's totally fine. But just separate out your personal slightly from your personal brand because as much as your personal brand is yourself and your dogs and your family, in your life, there's also a small separation of like, this is also, you know, for the growth of my business and the growth of my impact and my message. So just expect the troll comments to come and then you can utilize that and just be confident in what you're saying. What is Man Up? It's not gender specific. It's not just for men. Women can man up too because man up is a state of mind. It's when you stop making excuses, you take control of your situation, and you rise to your potential. See, I had to man up as an entrepreneur and a leader so that I can build the empire that I have and make an impact on the community that I want to serve. What about you? Maybe you want to man up as an entrepreneur or in your personal finances or maybe in your health and fitness or your relationship. I can tell you this. It's time to man up. It's time to stop making excuses. Take control of your situation and rise to your potential. Thank you so much for having us for tonight. Thank you so much for all of you all at 9 a.m. Appreciate you guys. Thank you, man. Trainer, I, you know, got my LLC, like started my own. This wraps the panel talk, and it went so incredibly well. I feel like this is such a well-run event. If you guys don't follow Bedros yet, and you are a fitness professional, please go follow him. It's almost like.
uh, he his audience is a lot of men and then there's some females but I feel like so many people need to follow him because he is like the solver of all the problems when you feel like you've tried so hard when you know you're just a trainer or you're just an online coach and then you feel like you're not making any revenue and then he's here to swoop you up and fix all your problems so he is amazing I think we talked a lot about social media but I feel like the main message that kept coming back was that you really don't need to focus so heavily on just growing your social media following yes that's where everything is going right now and everyone wants to know how to grow and it looks really nice and you know who am I to talk that's where I started but it's funny now that I'm learning all these things from all these people that have been in the fitness business industry for way longer than I have like Pedros, he has 37,000 followers, but he makes millions and millions and millions of dollars. And it's almost like that is an afterthought to them. So focusing on leads and focusing on customers and focusing on solving the problems and then having really quality people come to you so you can really, really work with them on a specific level is going to give you so much more return than just focusing on only social media. Yes, it might seem like when you're in this little bubble that we're in here on YouTube that everyone's putting out free, 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 free everything, but that's gonna give you so much burnout. It's almost just really, really difficult to only focus on that and then feel like you're getting nowhere and it's funny because someone at the very end I was taking photos and talking and the last person that I was talking to his name was Tom and he's from London and he said thank you so much for becoming rich and wealthy and I hope you become more rich and more wealthy so you can inspire me to do the same and you can inspire others to do the same and I like literally started crying and I, I know that's a funny thing to say but if you think about it the wealth will inspire more impact it's going to inspire more change and commitment in people's lives and money is a funny thing that a lot of people talk about but it's just pain point for a lot of people you know like it, it's it, it hurts and if you're not you know making it yet and you don't know how and you feel like you've had all of these lessons instilled in you for years and years and years like money's not doesn't grow on trees money is for rich and greedy people rich people are greedy and manipulative and all of these things are lies they're illusions they're not anything to truly believe and it, those are created to keep people in line and then you you know go to high school you go to college you get your job and then you fall in line and that's your normal societal norm and that's not the reality anymore and there's it's so much it's so easy now to create something online and to everybody has the same opportunity it's the internet it's you can start right now and you can do it it's not just someone who is incredibly talented and incredibly shredded and incredibly whatever you can do it and I think that's the most beautiful thing in the whole world. And it, you know, if more people are making a living doing what they love, the world's just a happier place. So thank you guys for watching the video. Um, I hope it was awesome and inspiring for you. Go follow Bedros, come to the Fitness Business Summit next year, and I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye.